Continuing with our Bible stories, starting with number 16, Farmer Gideon's Men. The people of Israel were hiding. They hid in caves, they hid in the hills, they were hiding from the men on camels. The men on camels came riding into the promised land from beyond the river, the Jordan River. They took away the sheep, they took away the cows, they took away the donkeys. They trampled on the corn as soon as it was planted. Why did God let them? God still loved the people of Israel, but they had broken their promise of love to love him and to live as he wants. The people of Israel had no wool, they had no milk, they had no bread. They were afraid of the men on camels. There were too many of them to count. Help, help, please help us, they cried to God. And God answered them. You have broken your promise, God said. Yet now you are in trouble. You want me to help? And I will help, because I still love you. God went to find Farmer Gideon. I have a special job for you, God said. You must rescue my people from those men on camels. But I can't fight them, Farmer Gideon objected. I'm a farmer, not a soldier. You can if I help you, God said. The men on camels came riding in again from beyond the river, the Jordan River. Too many of them to count. Then Farmer Gideon blew a long blast on his trumpet. Dun, dun, he was calling for help and the men came running. Too many, God said. Tell the ones who are scared to go home. Still too many. God said, as Gideon watched them go, take the ones who are left to the stream to drink. The ones I want will cup their hands and lap like dogs. That way they can keep a lookout for danger. The rest can go home. That left just 300 to fight the men on camels, who were too many to count. That night, God said to Gideon, get up. It's time to go. Gideon gave every man a trumpet. He gave every man a flaming torch and a jar to hide it in. All was quiet. They crept up close to the men on camels who were still fast asleep. Now Gideon's men were all around their camp. What was that terrible noise in the quiet night? Gideon's men were blowing their trumpets. What was that blaze of light in the dark? Gideon's men had broken the jars that hid their flaming torches. The men on camels woke up in a fright. They were so scared, they leapt on their camels and fled. Story 17. The Lion Killer. Samson was different from all the other boys. His dark curly hair grew down past his shoulders and Samson was strong, stronger than any other boy. It was God who made Samson strong. It was God who said Samson's hair must never, never be cut. It was the sign that Samson was God's strong man. One day, when Samson was out for a walk, he heard a great <coughs> It was a lion, a fierce, wild lion. That lion might hurt someone. So Samson went looking for it. 
When he found the lion, Samson killed it with his own two hands. God had made him so strong. The people of Israel were in trouble. The people from the sea came sailing in and built cities of their own in the promised land. They made God's people very unhappy. Help, help, please help us, they cried to God. What about your promise, God said to them. You have broken your promise to love me and live as I want, yet now you are in trouble. You want me to help you? And I will help you, because I still love you. God chose Samson to rescue them. That was why God had made him so strong. Samson was grown up now. His hair had never been cut. It was the sign that Samson was God's strong man. He began to make trouble for the people from the sea. He wasn't a bit afraid of them. Samson was so strong that when they tied him up, he broke the ropes. When they shut him in, he tore down the doors and carried them off. Samson made big trouble for the people from the sea, though they tried and tried to catch him. What makes you so strong? asked beautiful Delilah one day. You can tell me your secret. I won't tell anyone. Delilah was helping the people from the sea to catch Samson. She asked and asked till at last he said, I won't be strong if my hair is cut. Then the people from the sea came and cut his hair. Samson was not God's strong man anymore. They put him in prison. But Samson told God how sorry he was and God made Samson strong again. One last time, Samson made big trouble for the people from the sea. Big, big trouble. He pulled a huge building down on top of himself and all the people inside. Story 18. Ruth's new family. There was no food left at home in Bethlehem, so Naomi and her family went away to a land that had plenty of food. They stayed away for a long time. I must go home again, Naomi decided one day. She was all alone now. No husband and no children. Her husband and both her boys had died. I will go with you, said Orpa, who was married to one of Naomi's boys. Let me come too, said Ruth, who had married the other. They were kind girls, and they both loved Naomi dearly. So they set out together, but on the way, Naomi said, It was kind of you to come so far. Now you must go back. Both girls cried. They loved Naomi dearly, and they did not want to leave her. Sadly, Orpah went back. But Ruth held Naomi tight let me go with you to Bethlehem, she said. From now on, your home will be my home. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Ruth would not change her mind. So they went on together. When they got to Bethlehem, everyone was very excited. Naomi! Is it really you? After all this time? And they all talked about Ruth. How kind she is to Naomi, they said. It was harvest time in Bethlehem. They were cutting the corn. Naomi and Ruth were very poor. They had no farm of their own and no one to help them. Ruth went out to the fields each day and she picked up the corn that was left to make bread for them both to eat. The fields belonged to Farmer Boaz. 
He saw how hard Ruth worked. He heard how kind she was. And Naomi was one of his family. Leave plenty for Ruth, he told his men. Wherever did you get all that corn? asked Naomi when Ruth got home. Ruth told her, and Naomi thought of a plan. Kind Ruth deserved a good husband. Farmer Boaz was just the man. Naomi's plan worked. Ruth and Farmer Boaz were married. They had a baby boy. Granny Naomi was so pleased. She jiggled the baby on her knee and they laughed together. Thank you, God, for making me happy again, she said and for giving me my kind Ruth, a family of her own. One day, when Ruth's baby was grown up, he had a little grandson of his own. That baby's name was David, and David became a great king. But that is another story. <laughs>